It seems as though our appearance is ill-timed. My deepest apologies. Oh, don't worry about it. By now, Okita had lost consciousness and he was drenched in sweat. Well, that's good. Ever since drinking the water of life, Okita's tuberculosis symptoms had subsided a bit. But between the journey to Kofu and his battle with Kaoru, his body had regressed from all of the excess stress, even more than I had anticipated. Chizuru, what do you intend to do from here? If it is leaving for Mutsu that you seek, I would be more than happy to see you escorted safely. I truly appreciated Sen's offer, but... Or do you wish to stay beside Okita? I nodded. Very well. I expected as much. I mean, how could one leave him after witnessing that display earlier? I'm so sorry. You came all this way to deliver the information about my father, too. No need to apologize. All I ask is that you keep yourself safe, okay? As Dr. Matsumoto said, the Imperial Army is keeping very close tabs on Kondo. Mm. Well then, I think it's time for us to leave. Okay, thank you so much for today. Really, the doctor is leaving me here with this guy? <laughs> this guy's dying on his own fluids and things, man. Please, it's quite alright, but... Whatever you do, do not let Okita seek Kondo. He said himself that he cares very little for himself, but... I know Kondo would be very unhappy to hear his life was saved at the cost of Okita's. Mm. You think I can stop him? It is time we were on our way, then. We will contact you should anything else happen. Okay, thank you. I bow deeply as I watch Dr. Matsumoto, Sen, and Kimigiku file out of the room. Great. I'm all on my own. A few days passed since their visit, and I had spent most of the time tending to Okita's critical condition. The thought of Kondo in captivity made me shiver with anxiety, so I was a bit distracted, but... Okita promised me that he would put all of his focus into recuperating before leaving the hiding place. Okita? Are you still awake? I'm coming in. I called his name through the sliding door, and as I softly opened it, I found Okita standing tall. Dressed, probably. And armed. Hey! What do you think you're doing, Okita? Why are you out of bed? What are you going to do if you start coughing again? Okay, at least he's still in his robe. Jeez, just give it a rest. Stop throwing a bitch fit every five seconds. I'm just grabbing my sword. Sword? Don't tell me you plan on leaving to find Kondo, especially in your condition. Holy hell, all you do is jump from one conclusion to the next. I'm not doing anything stupid. Yeah, but in your mind, that's not stupid. I'm gonna have to rescue Kondo eventually, but I know it can wait until after my condition improves. I felt a slight sense of relief. Mind grabbing my sword over there for me? Sure. This one? I grabbed the sword atop the rack sitting across from Okita's futon, and I offered it to him with both of my hands. I felt a significant weight in the sword, which looked rather unfamiliar to me as I handed it to Okita. Thanks. Okita took the sword from me, and his eyes thinned as his gaze ran up and down the length of the sword. Uh, that sword. It looks different to the one you normally use. Okita said nothing, as if he didn't hear me. Last night, I dreamt of Kondo. Kondo? Yeah. <laughs> he let out a melancholy chuckle before beginning to detail his dream. This must have been three years ago. When the Shogunate ordered us to do the second Choshu expedition, Kondo stopped by my room. A domain governed by Takachika Mori, an opposition daimyo. Most members of this domain were imperialists during the early part of the Bakumatsu period, and later attempted more directly to overthrow the Shogunate. 
Soji, I am sure that you've heard already, but... The Shogunate has sent word for me personally to visit the Choshu and put an end to all of this. Yeah, it got around, but... Why are you the one who has to go? They could send anyone else, literally anyone other than you, to see to that. No, I cannot turn my back on my duty like that. This is a direct order from the Shogunate. Then I'll go with you. If you go to Choshu, you may as well have a target on your back. They'll kill you. Kondo's expression held firm, and it was far more stern than usual. No, you are not coming with me. Why not? It's my job to protect you. But even if I wanted him to, Kondo had no interest in answering my question. He just glanced over to his side, grabbed the sword on the rack next to him, and he handed it to me. What's this? It's a Yamashiro Nakami Fujiwara Kunikiyo. I am gonna have to practice that one, because that did not come out properly. Let's see. Yamashiro Nakami Fujiwara Kunikiyo. Kuni Kunikiyo. A sore tempered by smiths of the highest order that was gifted to Soji Okita by Isumi Kondo. It is the work of a second generation Kunikiyu swordsmith. Wow. Haven't you always wanted a chrysanthemum sword, Okita? A sword with the logo, logo of a chrysanthemum. Emperor Gotoba created the sword. Also points to swords that were approved to get a chrysanthemum logo. Interesting. I remember absentmindedly mentioning something about it to Kondo a while before, but... What's this for? Why are you giving this to me? And then, Kondo looked me dead in the eye, and I'd never seen him more serious than in that moment. I felt it was the only sword that could befit the fifth suzurain of the Tanning Rishin style. A school of swordplay popular in the Tama region, Kondo is a master of the style, and Hijikata, Okita, and Inoue were among his students. Oh! My stomach dropped, like all the blood in my body just seeped from my feet. I mean, for me to succeed him as the teacher of the Tenin Rishin style must mean... I can't accept this. Hey, Soji. Taking on the duties of being the fifth generation master is something I should do when I'm older. Kind of like how you took it for Master Shusai when you were a much older man. The third generation master of the Tenin Rishin style of swordsmanship. The adoptive father of Isumi Kondo who established Shie Hall. And Isumi is kind of like your adoptive father too, Okita. Oh, this is so sad. <laughs> The only time I feel comfortable taking it from you is when you're hobbling around with a wooden cane, when you can't even hold a sword, Kondo. Kondo stared at me like I was a young child, which made it difficult to feel like my words had any weight. But eventually... Soji, you do me far too much kindness in saying that, but... The future holds no certainties, especially in this era, and who knows what shall happen to us. I was raised on a farm, but after dedicating my life to the path of the warrior, it is now time for me to accept that my life belongs to the Shogun. However, if the Tending Rishin were to die along with me, that would be unforgivable. It is something I am truly passionate about. I just kept looking down, but I felt Kondo wrap his warm hand around my shoulder. I'm counting on you, Soji. And he placed the sword into my hands. What was Kondo thinking? There's no way I could live up to him. There's still so much he has to teach me. Okita. I'll never let this sword be a memento from Kondo. I won't let it happen. Okita held the sword tenderly for a long while, and I could tell that its symbolism meant more to Okita than any one of us could possibly imagine. 
Thanks for giving this to me. Can you put it back? I grabbed the blade from Okita and I placed it atop the majestic rack. From behind the sliding door, I could hear the faint chirp of cicadas who'd wandered into the house. As we listened to their cries in silence, Okita grabbed a hold of my hand, speaking up. Hey, Chizuru. Would you stop me from rescuing Kondo? <laughs> Whatever you do, do not let Okita seek Kondo. This was a strict order from Dr. Matsumoto. What should I tell him? I don't want you to go, or I can't stop you. Oh, gosh. I mean, he has listened to her before. But in that instance, he was just cutting down random Ronin in the streets because he felt useless since he wasn't there when Kondo got shot. So that's a bit of a different situation from right now. I, I literally can't stop you from doing this. I mean, Kondo is someone that Chizuru is very fond of as well. I don't want him to die, but I mean, Soji is so amazing, even when he has tuberculosis. I feel like he stands a good chance, actually, at rescuing Kondo. But I feel like she also would support him in this, because it's so... I mean, why else share this very precious memory with her right before this choice, if not to say, like... Remember, they have a very special relationship. They're basically like father and son. And they care about each other deeply. I don't think Soji could live with himself if he knew he didn't try. So, I'm gonna say I can't stop you. I know it's foolhardy, but I am gonna say it anyway. I can't stop you. Because I know how much he means to you, Okita. Ha. <sighs> Okita sighed in relief, and he flashed a confident smirk. <laughs> yeah, I knew you'd like that. I had a feeling you'd say that. Hey, Chizuru. Come here. Huh? Uh... Come here. He made his request more firmly, and I walked slowly to his futon as he asked. What now? Then he grabbed my wrist and drew me closer to his chest. Can you blame her for being like, what's gonna happen? Listen, are you... You guys okay? <laughs> this angle, what's happening? <laughs> oh. This wasn't the first time that Okita had embraced me tightly, but... Okay, are you guys hugging right now? This is like a weird hug pose. No matter how many times he touched me, I couldn't have imagined ever tiring of the sensation. Girl, just you wait till you get that kiss. You guys, all you guys doing is hugging right now. Being engulfed by his warmth and scent enraptured me, more than enough to make my heart pound. But more than that, it was the comfort from being close to him, feeling certain that this was where I belonged, that I loved him most. That does not look very comfortable. <laughs> you guys gotta get in a more comfy position. You're worried about me, aren't you? Of course. I let my body sink deeper against his, and I bit into my lips nervously. I thought about Okita's fragile health, and how brave he was to re-enter the fray in his condition. My one true inclination would have been for him to stay and I held him more tightly as the possibility of losing him came to mind. But even so, it wasn't as if I couldn't understand just how much Kondo had meant to him. You know, ever since you came into my life, I've always given you a hard time. So why are you still with me after all that? I don't really understand why, either. Is it pity? Or is it just because you feel responsible that your twin brother tricked me into drinking the water of life? It's neither of those things. Then why? <laughs> my heart yearned to tell the truth, to share with him my most intimate of secrets. But for now, it felt best to let Okita focus on saving Kondo and not worry about my feelings for him. 
He needed all the help he could get to keep his emotions in check. Oh, Chizuru. I can't explain it either. It's just difficult to take my eyes off you. I see. I felt as though my answer may not have been what he'd hoped to hear, given his curt answer. <sighs> Okita sighed deeply, as if he were too distraught to give me more. What about you, Okita? Why do you continue to let me stay by your side? He flared his nostrils, sneering as he usually did. Well, since you won't give me a straight answer, I won't give you one either. I suppose it was his way of getting back at me, and I chose to savor the time I had in his arms. Me. Nee. Fine. You both can be difficult. Whatever. With your snuggles. After a few days had passed, we'd received an unexpected visitor in the evening. <gasps> Hi! Thanks for coming, man! You look great in the purple. That hairdo is going to take a while to get used to, though. You look great! Hey, long time no see. Hechikata! You're safe! How's Soji? I heard he's not doing too good. He's resting for now, but... Would you like me to wake him? No, don't bother. Pretty sure he wouldn't want to see me anyway. What are you... It's actually why I'm here. You don't need me to tell you this, but Edo's down in the dumps. So what's your plan? The Imperial government's got a real nasty grudge against us. If you're still around, who knows what the hell they'll do to you. I... Well, obviously, I'm going to stay beside my boo. I'm going to remain by Okita's side. I just wouldn't feel right leaving Okita in his current state. Gotcha. Well, thanks for that. We can't really afford to watch after him right now. <laughs> that sounds terrible. Anyways, I won't take up any more of your time. Tell Soji I said hi. Wait, let me walk you out. I rushed to follow Hijikata, who had already turned around to head for the door. This, you just came in to check and say, like, what? how's the situation? What about you guys? What's happening with all of you? I haven't seen you in eons. How is everybody? Are they alive? I got questions. Um, can I ask you something? Hmm? What? Is it true that the Imperial Army captured Kondo? Hijikata's eyes thinned and he was reluctant to speak. Yeah. So it's true. What happened? We were hiding in Nagareyama, and they surrounded us. To buy us some time to escape, Kondo turned himself in to the Imperial forces. A city located northeast of Edo, who grew prosperous through their use of travel channels along Edo River and its many canals. It is also known for its mirin, a sweet cooking wine. He said he'd use an alias so no one would suspect his true identity, but... It took a lot for Hichikata to tell me all of this. From the tone of his voice, he seemed resigned that there was a slim chance of Kondo returning safely. Knowing Soji, he probably thinks I left Kondo behind and ran to save my own skin. Well, I will speak with Okita. No, don't. Better for you not to tell him anything. But why? No matter the circumstances, it doesn't change the fact that I didn't do enough to save Kondo. Without me to blame, I doubt he'll have anything to motivate him, and I'm worried he'll lose the will to live. But... I wasn't content with Hijikata's answer, but he merely sighed again. <sighs> he turned his gaze towards the dim sky. It'd be less of a pain in my ass if I just woke him up and let him kill me right here where I'm standing just to let it all out. <gasps> Between Kondo's surrender and the possibility of Okita losing the will to live, it seemed Hijikata was shouldering the weight of that burden which was draining him as well. After a moment of silence, Hijikata gritted his teeth, stopping himself from expressing his thoughts. We're headed north. Don't get yourself killed, Yukimura. 
Hijikata nodded, and without another word, he walked away from our abode. Toshi. Once he'd walked far enough that I couldn't see the small of his back, I returned inside. I hope you were listening, you sneak. As I made my way back to the entrance, I noticed someone standing in the hall waiting for me. You were just talking to someone outside, weren't you? Who was it? Um... Let me guess. Hijikata. I knew it. What did he want? Did he come to mouth off some excuses about why he abandoned Kondo? No, Hijikata- What? You on his side now? I don't care what he said! He left Kondo and there's no excusing that! And god damn it, Kondo's probably sitting there hoping that Hijikata's gonna come and save him! <coughs> Okita dropped to his knees, coughing violently enough that I was afraid his lungs would burst out of his chest. Dang it, Soji! Okita. <laughs> Please, don't lose sight of yourself. Be strong. I sat helplessly beside him, and when words weren't enough, I hugged his body tightly. You crazy fool. <laughs> I must blame somebody for this. I get it, but poor Toshi don't deserve it. The month of April breezed by, bringing and taking with it the gentle winds of spring. Okita's condition stabilized, and he was strong enough to use his sword. We decided to leave the city of Edo in the dead of night, avoiding the watchful gaze of the Imperial Army. Just as we approached the outskirts of Edo, <clears throat> Okita sensed something was off and he stopped dead in his tracks. Chizuru, get behind me. Okay. I sauntered slowly behind his back just as he commanded me. The outline of two shadows became slightly visible and they began to walk towards us eerily. It was. Oh! Oh! Hi! Wow! Kazuma! Look at you! I love the jacket brings out your eyes. I like that Amagiri is still wearing the same thing. <laughs> Kazuma's like, nah. Look. I gotta compete with the Shinsengumi boys. They all look hot. I gotta get myself a hot jacket. Great. What a pleasant surprise to find the both of you still in Edo. Chikage Kazuma. A demon previously affiliated with the Satsuma Domain, he heads the Kazuma clan and seeks the protagonist as his bride. I was under the impression that the Shinsengumi dogs were already on their way to Aizu. So why, pray tell, are you here? <laughs> Beats me. Mind getting out of my way? We don't really have any time for this whole song and dance right now. Okita tried to budge his way between the two demons. Cause that'll work. Where do you think you're going? Off to save the poor little Shinsengumi chief from the Imperials. Amagiri's question only irritated Okita. A demon affiliated with Satsuma Domain, he is a master of hand-to-hand -hand combat and is often seen with Kazuma. Yeah, who wants to know? If you're gonna stand in my way, then be prepared to take my sword to your gut. You are merely wasting your time by going. This evening... Isumi Kondo was beheaded. No! No! Kondo, no! Really? Please tell me you're lying. Cosma, no! A humiliating form of execution that involves the forced removal of the head with an enormous sharp blade. You don't say. No! Kondo! Uh. Okay, to a frozen place. I couldn't believe it. Kondo, our beloved friend and leader, was executed. You're lying. What do I have to gain from lying to you, fool? 
The word is that his head was taken to Kyoto, and they plan on unveiling it at Sanjigawara. A location in which the heads of beheaded criminals are publicly displayed as an act of shame. No, not not to Kondo. That's a lie. I won't believe it. There's no way Kondo's dead. Uh oh. The next moment, Okita's hair turned white. He wore a demon-like expression, seething with hatred, and he drew his sword. Okita! My words, however, fell on his deaf ears. Okita lunged his blade angrily towards Kazuma. You idiot. That was such a quiet block. Kazuma kept his composure as he dodged effortlessly from the path of Okita's attack. Well, if there's anybody that Soji had to take out his rage on, Kazuma's the best bet, because he can easily deal with it. Okita, however, was unfazed, flailing his blade madly in the direction of Kazuma. Okita, you can't! I tried to rush closer to him when. Thanks, Amagiri. You're always looking out for me. Amagiri stopped me by yanking on my shoulders. If I were you, I wouldn't get any closer. You're only going to get hurt. Let go of me! I can't just let Okita... Okita and Kazuma were locked in a battle to the death. When at first our blades met at Akeda Inn all those years ago, I hadn't thought your swordsmanship half bad for a human. An inn raided by Shinsengumi troops in Kyoto to halt a plot to kidnap the Emperor and burn the city of Kyoto to ashes. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. What makes you think you can stand a chance against me when you can barely hold your sword? SHUT UP! Okita was struggling to catch his breath as he continued to thrash wildly, hoping to land a hit on Kazuma. Amagiri, could you just, like, punch him? <laughs> Knock him out? Unfortunately, Okita's skill proved insufficient. God damn it! It was clear, as Kazuma had boasted, that Okita's condition slowed his technique, giving Kazuma a very clear advantage. Normally, there wasn't a noticeable difference in their skill level, but just then... Nah. Okita's sword was smacked out of his hand and it clanged to the ground. How pathetic. You drank the water of life to become a fake, and sadly it proved worthless when it really mattered. <sighs> it is my duty as a demon to rid the world of you fakes. Repent for your foolishness and die! Cosmo sneered with palpable contempt as he looked down on Okita. He lifted his sword high into the air, ready to cleave into Okita and tear him asunder. No! I swatted Amagiri's arms with all of my strength. Did it actually work? I desperately ran towards Okita, using every bit of energy that my legs could muster. However, something happened that I never expected. Oh. <gasps> I couldn't tell if it was divine intervention, or perhaps an inner force manifesting inside of me that was provoked under the weight of all this stress. But I felt a power emanating from within. And then, oh my god, I can't wait for this. I, it, this, right now though, before, I'm, I know, I'm, I'm stalling, but I just realized that she, everybody else when they drink the water of life immediately is like, eh, and they turn white hair, red eyes. She didn't do that. She felt nauseous for a bit, and that was it. So what is going to happen now? I unsheathed my sword, and I lunged to block the path of Cosmo's sword as it nearly landed on Okita. Oh yeah, it's my turn! Jeezeru. Okita couldn't believe what he was seeing. To be quite honest, neither could I, and he stared in awe. <laughs> Cosmo too was vexed. And his surprise became agitation as he realized I thwarted him. Well, this is a new look from you to me. You. Why do you glow so vibrantly? Huh? I had no idea what he could have meant by that, leaving me no response. I find it hard to believe you are capable of harnessing your powers so potently. And yet, 
Here you are. Thus, it must mean... You consumed the water of life, did you not? <laughs> I hadn't noticed the difference, but... Does that mean I look like a fury just now? Do I have horns? What's happening? I need a puddle. Does anybody have a puddle? Eventually, Cosma sheathed his sword and he scoffed. <laughs> Leave. Huh? A woman who has sullied herself with the water of life is unworthy of my love. Consider this over. Wow, how dare you break up with me? <laughs> you are dead to me. You are free to rot in a ditch with this other fake for all I care. So in other words, has that meant that Cosmo was no longer obsessed with me? Do I smell bad now? What? Meaning other demons would cease to pursue me? Is this a good thing? That petty human conflict should be over soon. The Imperial Army has no plans to pardon the lives of any remaining Shogunate warriors. Seems like the Northeastern Domains are still squabbling, but the fate of the war has been set. Indeed. Our duty to the Satsuma Domain has been fulfilled. A domain governed by an opposition daimyo named Shimazu. Initially, they supported imperial unification, but eventually allied with the Choshu Domain and other like-minded men in the interest of removing the Shogunate. Which means I will no longer have to bother myself with your presence. With that, Cosma turned his back, dismissing me with aplomb. I don't know how to feel about this. He said nothing more as he sauntered away. A great feeling of relief came over me as the fury power subsided. I was certain that we would be facing our deaths, and yet somehow we managed to survive. Okita looked utterly drained, on the other hand, as if his spirit was ripped from his body. Oh yeah, back to the matter at hand. Um, Okita? I timidly called out his name. It's a lie, right? His voice quivered. Aw, oh, tears! No! Even tears now? This is too much for me. It has to be a lie. Those bastards are deceiving us. I mean, how could it happen? Kondo worked day and night in Kyoto, giving everything he had for the shogunate, the shogun and the people of Kyoto. They disgraced him. They killed him like a criminal. And now they're going to display his head. This isn't right. Okita was hoping it was all a cruel farce, desperately clinging to the hope that Cosma was lying. And behind his quivering voice were tears waiting to flood his glossy eyes. The truth was difficult to accept, and Okita wasn't equipped to handle what all of it meant. Okita... What could I say? I could only repeat his name. His gaze was fixed on the floor and he quickly grabbed a hold of me. Oh. Aww. Isn't this just a reskin of Hachiro? <laughs> Except he has his arm. I I gotta look at that. This is almost it's very close to the, the Hachiro CG. But all the same, seeing my my poor boy in tears is terrible. No, no, no! It's a lie! It has to be! Okita buried his face into my lap as he sobbed frantically. The realization that he lost the closest thing he had to a father was sinking in, and his cries of mourning tore me apart. Why did Kondo have to die? He was so gentle, so strong. He gave everything to the Shogunate, always put himself last. He gave me everything, and I couldn't repay him. Why? Why did he have to die so soon? I could hardly hear him toward the end of his lamentation as his voice became muffled in my lap. There was nothing I could say. All I could do was comfort him in this fragile state, holding him and contemplating what was to come. <sighs> <sighs> 